All right, let's talk about Face Fusion. It's this incredible AI tool that can give you these absolutely stunning photorealistic results, but it can also give you, well, complete digital disasters. So today we're gonna dive in and figure out how to get it right every single time. You've seen it, right? It's the big question. You see one face swap online that is just flawless, it looks like something straight out of a Hollywood movie. And then you see another one that's just a glitchy, horrifying mess. So what's the secret? Is it some different super expensive software? Do you need a NASA supercomputer? Nope. The secret isn't magic and it's not a bigger computer. It's just knowledge. The huge gap between those amateur results and the pro level stuff, it all comes down to understanding Face Fusion's super powerful and yeah, sometimes kind of hidden controls. And that's exactly what we're gonna master together right now. Okay, so first things first. Before we can even think about fixing problems, we have to understand the tools we're working with. Let's decode this whole control panel and break the interface down so it actually makes sense. And here it is. I know at first glance, it can look a little intimidating. There's a lot going on, but it's actually set up in a really logical way. Just think of this as your creative command center. The easiest way to wrap your head around this is to see it in three columns. The left column is basically the system stuff. You're telling it what to do and how to do it. The center column is super simple. That's where you put your source face, your target video, and you hit that big green start button. And the column on the right? Well, that's where the real magic happens. That's where we get to fine tune the AI's brain. Okay, listen up, because this is probably the single most important setting for anyone just starting out. Over on the left, under Execution Providers, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you absolutely must select CUDA. If you leave it on CPU, your processing speed is going to be desperately, painfully slow. I'm talking hours saved with this one click. Seriously. So now that we've got the basics covered, let's get to the real core of this whole thing. You can forget about tweaking dozens of little settings. To really dramatically boost the quality of your swaps, you only need to master two key areas. Key number one is the engine itself. For the model, we're gonna use HyperSwap. It's pretty much the modern standard. It gives you a great balance of speed and really high fidelity expression tracking. But the real secret here, the game changer, is Pixel Boost. This is basically the internal resolution the AI is working with. Bumping this up from 256 to 512 is the difference between that blurry, obviously AI look, and capturing crisp, realistic details in the eyes and skin. The second key to quality is all about how the AI finds the faces in the first place. The standard option is YOLO face, which is short for you only look once. And it's fast, yeah, but that's because it just glances at the frame and moves on, so it can get confused by tricky angles or fast movement. For high quality work, what you really want is retina face. Now it is a bit slower, but its accuracy is just phenomenal. It will find and lock onto a face in a crowd, in profile, even during fast motion. The trade-off is simple. For top tier quality, you accept the slower speed and you choose retina face. All right, now that we know how to get great quality from the start, let's become problem solvers. We're gonna tackle the three most common AI nightmares. You know, those awful glitches that just completely ruin a perfect swap and I'm gonna give you the exact recipe to fix every single one. Oh, you have definitely seen this one. It's when a singer's microphone suddenly starts to merge with their lips or someone waves their hand and it becomes part of their cheek. It's that classic horror movie AI failure called occlusion. The fix for this is actually really elegant. First, you just change the face mask type to occlusion. You're literally telling the AI, hey, be aware that things might pass in front of the face. Then you just make sure the occluder model is set to XSEG, and finally you add just a little bit of blur to the mask edge to get a really seamless soft blend. And just like that, problem solved. Ugh, this one is so jarring. Your swap looks absolutely perfect, and then during a quick head turn, bam, for just a single frame, the original face flashes through, completely shattering the illusion. That's a tracking failure. So here's the three-part recipe to nail this down. First, we switch to that more accurate retina face detector we talked about. Second, we lower the detector score. This basically tells the AI, hey, be a little less picky and just keep trying to find a face even if you're not 100% sure. And third, we increase the reference distance, which makes the AI more tolerant of changes as the face turns away from the camera. Altogether, these settings force the AI to just lock on and never let go. Okay, our final nightmare, the dreaded floating forehead. You know, that visible seam, that harsh, unnatural line you sometimes see across the forehead or the chin where the new face is stitched on. This usually happens when your source and target faces have pretty different head shapes. 
The solution here is a really clever two-step process. First, we're gonna use the face mask padding. By adding a tiny value to the top padding, we're literally extending the swap area a little bit higher up the forehead, right over that ugly seam. Then, for this specific problem, we turn on the face enhancer. What that does is it generates a matching skin texture in that new padded area, and it just blends that border perfectly. So we've learned the best settings for amazing quality, and we know how to fix the most common problems. Now let's put it all together into a professional workflow that's gonna save you a ton of time and help you prevent these errors from happening in the first place. This is the efficient three-step pro workflow that will save you so much frustration. First, you preview and tweak. Use the instant runner mode. This gives you a live preview so you can see your changes in real time without rendering the whole video. Second, you spot check. Go find the hardest parts of your clip, like that scene with the hand waving in front of the face, and make sure your settings are actually working there. And finally, you render safely. For that final long export, always set the video memory strategy to strict. This prevents your graphics card from running out of memory and crashing an hour into a render. It is a lifesaver. So there you have it. We've decoded the entire interface, we've unlocked the two biggest keys to quality, and we've solved the most common AI nightmares. You seriously now have the knowledge to go from those glitchy, weird swaps to truly photorealistic results. So the only question left is, with these tools at your command, what stories are you going to create?